Hi everyone, welcome to CVS KL Facebook Live. I'm very excited. My name is Dr. Razali Omar. I'm one of the cardiologists practicing at CVS KL and I also specialize in electrophysiology. For those of you who don't know what electrophysiology is, we are a subset of uh, a subspecialty of cardiology that deals with uh, rhythm abnormalities of the heart. So it's like I always tell my patients uh, when you have a when you have a problem with the coronary arteries, you go and see the plumber. Like your when your house uh, when the pipes are blocked, but when your electrical problems, you call uh, the electrician. So I'm the electrician of the heart that deals with anything that goes too fast or too slow. So today. I want to concentrate on this very important subject of atrial fibrillation and the reason is because it is the commonest arrhythmia that I find nowadays and it is also an arrhythmia that can lead to a stroke, it can lead to heart failure and it can lead to a higher chance of death. So what is atrial fibrillation? I will be answering some of your questions and please feel free to send me all the questions and because this is Malaysia Muhiba, you can send your question in Bahasa Malaysia, English, Chinese, Mandarin, Hokkien, Cantonese, Hakka, Fu Chao, and Tamil. And Tamil. Do I miss anyone? No. Hopefully. And, and uh, Dan Lain Lain, as they like to say in Malaysia. Dan Lain Lain. Although, I cannot answer in Kadazan so, and, and, or, or, or Dusun. So, what is atrial fibrillation? Please, uh, while, while waiting for your, for, uh, for your answer, let me just give you a brief overview. I have been practicing electrophysiology for nearly 30 years. And what I find is that over the last 5 to 10 years, the number of patients with atrial fibrillation, not only in Malaysia, but all over the world, are on the increase. No one really knows what is the reason, but there are some hypotheses. And that is that as the country gets richer and richer, we seldom die from infective diseases like malaria and, uh, and all those things, but we die from rich man's disease, as you know, from heart attacks. And atrial fibrillation is one of them. As we get fatter, as you get more diabetes, more hypertension, all this can lead to atrial fibrillation. And that may be the reason why there is a higher incidence of atrial fibrillation nowadays. And atrial fibrillation can present either as palpitations, feeling of breathlessness, feeling of dizziness, and this brings the patient to the hospital. But more um, worrying is that sometimes atrial fibrillation is asymptomatic. We call it silent atrial fibrillation. The patient has no idea that they are in atrial fibrillation. And then they either present with stroke as the first indication that it was due to atrial fibrillation, or they present with heart failure, or they present with uh, fainting spells. And that's the only time we then realize that the patient has been in atrial fibrillation for some time. How do we treat atrial fibrillation? Well, the first thing we need to do is to assess the patient to make sure that the risk of stroke is either significant or not significant. If it is significant, then we have to start the patient on special medication called blood thinners. It's called oral anticoagulants, such as warfarin, such as the new oral anticoagulants like dabigatran, rivaroxaban, and idoxaban, and apixaban. So there are many now. And then we assess the patient and see how can we uh, improve the patient's symptoms. We can either give another drug, to reduce the symptoms or we can bring the patient to the hospital and perform a procedure called catheter ablation of atrial fibrillation. Okay, so I can see some questions here. One of the questions has been asked, and this may be a very popular question, can a heart attack cause AF? And the answer is yes. So AF doesn't cause a heart attack, but after a heart attack and if it's substantial heart attack cause damage to your heart, then the patient can develop atrial fibrillation. So once atrial fibrillation occurs in a patient after a heart attack, then it is not a very good combination. The atrial fibrillation will make the patient's heart function worse and vice versa. So yes, how is stroke related to atrial fibrillation? That's a very good question. 
in in our in our hearts, uh, when the heart is functioning normally, the upper chamber will squeeze the blood down to the lower chamber, and then the lower chamber squeeze. So synchronous contraction. This allows the blood to go in one direction from the top to the bottom, and then the bottom chamber, the ventricle squeeze, the blood goes out to the rest of the body. In atrial fibrillation, you lose this contraction. The heart is only fibrillating, like just moving, quivering, but it's not contracting. Now, our blood must be continuously moving. One good example, if you cut yourself and you see a drop of blood on the table, after a while, that blood becomes a clot. Why? Because it's not moving. So, if the heart chamber is not contracting, therefore the heart is not moving, especially in a very specialized chamber of the heart called the left atrial appendage, which is like a small little pouch in the left atrium, the blood gets trapped there and the blood stops moving and it forms clot. And this clot can break a small little piece like an asteroid, small little asteroid hit earth, there goes the dinosaurs, dinosaurs died. Now, a small little blood clot goes to your brain and you'll be paralyzed for the rest of your life. A stroke from atrial fibrillation blood clot is more severe than a stroke from non-atrial fibrillation reasons, such as stroke due to platelet uh, or due to carotid uh, uh, stenosis. So, this is how uh, atrial fibrillation causes stroke and it is one of the most devastating complications of atrial fibrillation. Will AF ever go away? Very good question. It depends. This is a very, very difficult question to answer. Will AF ever go away? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, a young lady comes with atrial fibrillation due to thyrotoxicosis, thyroid problem. So, during the peak of the thyroid toxicosis, atrial fibrillation may come, but it will go away because it was due to the thyroid toxicosis and once the thyroid is treated, AF goes away. Sometimes patient comes with infection, they get blood sepsis, the blood get a lot of bacteria and the patient can develop atrial fibrillation, that will go away. Sometimes patients, uh, people go weekend party, drink a lot, so they get drunk and then that can cause uh, alcohol induced atrial fibrillation. Yes, it will go away. However, Atrial fibrillation that is here to stay usually occurs in patients with, like I said just now, so then with heart problem, with hypertension, with diabetes, with heart failure, those kind of atrial fibrillation may not go away until we do something to make it go away. Can I lead a normal life with AF without treatment? If you are a young patient less than 65 years old and you don't have any other symptoms, and you don't have any other comorbidities, yes, you can lead a normal life if you have atrial fibrillation because you have the best chance of getting a cure if we were to do a procedure called catheter ablation very early. Studies have shown that atrial fibrillation begets atrial fibrillation, which means that if I leave you alone in atrial fibrillation, after many years, the atrial fibrillation will be settled. It's like a small tree. If you plant a small tree and then you say, oh, I don't like the tree in that part of the garden and you pull out the tree, you probably can pull out the tree with all its roots. But if you leave the tree and if you leave a small plant and it has grown roots very deep and you remove the tree, you may not be able to remove all the roots. So that's the analogy of atrial fibrillation. When it first occur, the atrial fibrillation is better, easier for us to cure and you can then lead the rest of your life free from atrial fibrillation. But if you come and see the doctor after 10 years of atrial fibrillation, then the atrial fibrillation has set its ways. It has caused changes in your heart that makes it more difficult for us to cure and you may need more than one procedure. Can I buy OTC, over-the-counter medication for AF? I don't recommend this <laughs> OTC. First of all, you need to make sure that you really have atrial fibrillation. Many times, even doctors misdiagnose atrial fibrillation and it's actually not atrial fibrillation. It can be atrial flutter. It can be atrial tachycardia with variable block. So therefore, I would say that please go and see a cardiologist first 
to confirm that you actually have atrial fibrillation, you also need to see a cardiologist to make sure that you are at risk or not at risk for stroke. The appropriate treatment can be given to you. These medications that I just mentioned, the blood thinners and all those medications to control your atrial fibrillation cannot be bought buy over the counter if you have been buying this over the counter please give the names to the director general so that we can disease okay next question are all fast heartbeat are all fast heartbeat af so no the answer is no all not all fast heartbeat is af but if i were to give you a, a ranking uh, if you are older meaning that 65 and above most commonly, fast heartbeat is AF. But if you're a 20-year-old guy, most likely it is not AF. It is supraventricular tachycardia. So that's why it is important. When a patient comes with fast heartbeat, we cannot diagnose fast heartbeat, the actual diagnosis, simply from what the patient tells us. We need to document, and it's not easy to document. Meaning what? That time the patient develops we need to capture the ECG and many times patient can be very frustrating can be very fr not patient is not frustrating patient is frustrated <laughs> that should wake you all up you are not frustrating I am frustrated so what happens is that patient has palpitation the patient rush to the hospital go to emergency what did they do take a number because he looked like quite well by the time the doctor come and see you the palpitation is gone and if you imagine you repeat this 10 times going to the same emergency room people will think that you are a bit cuckoo a bit kanchong correct and therefore they label you as kanchong they label you as anxiety actually you're not you have a problem it's just that it was so short duration that it was not captured we call it you must get that codec moment now these people don't have codec my time we call it codec moment that perfect shot so how do we have that perfect codec moment? Well, we can do 24-hour holter, 72-hour holter, two weeks holter. May or may not work because sometimes the palpitation occurs once every few months. So even if I test you many times, it will not work. But we are lucky. We are living in this era of wearable devices. Your Apple watches, your, your, your smartphones, your pulse oximeter, your blood pressure medicine, all this are able to record uh, your heart rate is able some of them even able to record your ECG and I've had many patients nowadays who come to me with a documented ECG based on their Apple phone based on their on their smart watches uh, that 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 gives me the diagnosis so I think it is very important and is it easier now for us to document is catheter ablation open heart surgery no it is not an open heart surgery but it can be done by open heart surgery, but we don't submit, we don't send you for uh, open heart surgery just for AF ablation because we can do better without open heart surgery. And what is it? It's like doing an angiogram. We go from your groin and we put special specialized catheters into your heart and then we will be able to identify where these areas and we can fix it. And there are two processes, you know. One is using... Uh, freezing method we call it cryo ablation and the other one is using the heating method radio frequency ablation hi doctor afternoon good afternoon good afternoon ma'am i would like to ask whether a patient with atrial fibrillation who is taking eloquis and tembaco can get covid19 vaccines very famous question my answer is this everyone should go and get their covid vaccination as soon as possible if you are in kuala lumpur and you are still not vaccinated, you are the unusual 0.01% uh, because I was told in Kuala Lumpur nearly 100% already patients are vaccinated. So, the only people who shouldn't get vaccinated are those people who are dead. If you are alive, go and get vaccinated. Do not use the excuse of whatever. If you are worried that your blood thinner uh, will be a problem just stop it one day before the vaccination or just the morning of the vaccination is enough the needle is so small that it will not cause any bleeding trust me the w say do not stop but i know some Malaysian uh pbv centers the the people there might be worried just tell them you stop this morning and you can go ahead and get your covid uh, vaccine please and we need to get the country back 
on his feet. Go and get vaccinated. What symptoms should I watch for that may indicate what my AFib is getting worse? If you already have AFib, if you already have atrial fibrillation and you have no symptoms, so you don't know when it's getting worse, isn't it? So that's why you have to uh, uh, go and see your doctor regularly. But if you have symptoms, and if the symptoms are, 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 are getting worse, then you know your atri atrial fibrillation is getting worse. So it is quite difficult uh, to know whether it's getting worse or not because sometimes the atrial fibrillation uh, is not manifesting as symptoms. In fact, 70% of atrial fibrillation is not symptomatic, meaning that the symptoms that you feel represents only a tip of the iceberg. The rest of the time you are in atrial fibrillation, you don't even know that you are in atrial fibrillation. And that's what makes it difficult. So when we, when I do a procedure and I treat the patient, one of the things I ask the patient is if you can afford it, go and buy all these things so that you can record and tell me for sure that you no longer have atrial fibrillation. Because when you tell me, when you come and see me once a month, they said, I don't have atrial fibrillation. Does it mean you really don't have atrial fibrillation? Or it means that you're not feeling the atrial fibrillation? So if you have something that you can rely on, either your pulse oximeter, your blood pressure machine, then you take it regularly and then we can make a better decision that the procedure or the medication is really working and that your atrial fibrillation burden is much reduced. Because atrial fibrillation, when it's reduced, it protects you from stroke, it protects you from heart failure and it protects you from dying from atrial fibrillation. What changes do I need to make my diet? Which foods can I eat? Which food should I avoid? So if you're talking about uh, atrial fibrillation, is there any diet uh, restriction? Yes. Um, I don't like to tell my patients, you cannot take this, you cannot take that. So in life, if you do that, the patient will not be able to maintain that. So what we do is, I always tell the patient, do you like to drink coffee? Yes. If you drink one cup of coffee, do you feel that the palpitation is getting worse? They say no. But when take a third of coffee, it's getting worse. So I said, then, in that case, stick to one or one and a half. Similarly with alcohol. So if you drink one uh, glass of beer, do you get the palpitation worse? No. But when I go to my second glass of beer, yes, it becomes more problematic. So I tell them, if you better for you not to drink alcohol, but if you have to drink, stick to one glass of beer. And so you, what I mean is that you have to gauge yourself what are the things that make the palpitation worse. So we know certain um, uh, food and drinks, alcohol, uh, uh, very high uh, 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 caffeine like coffee and all that. Yes, it can trigger. It does not cause the AF, but it can make the AF a bit more frequent. So food. The food that can cause atrial fibrillation is not, there's no direct relationship of a food. Uh, so, which means like, if you want to eat nasi kanda, I don't think nasi kanda can cause atrial fibrillation lah. But, if you have diabetes and you are eating a lot of uh, food that is not good for diabetes and your diabetes get worse, that can cause indirectly the atrial fibrillation. So, there's no direct like alcohol and coffee, but an indirect because it makes the diabetes worse, it makes the heart failure worse, it causes it cause you to develop other, uh, other uh, kind of condition. What lifestyle changes can I make to help control my condition? No. So, if you have atrial fibrillation, we can give you back your lifestyle. Why should you want to restrict your lifestyle? If you are 60 years old, do you want to live like an 80 years old? No, of course not. If you are 50, 60 years old, you have AF, we can give you back your lifestyle. If you want to play golf, you want to cycle 200 kilometers on a weekend, go ahead. Because we can treat it. We can cure atrial fibrillation. Do not compromise. And you don't have to compromise. You don't have to live with atrial fibrillation for the rest of your life. Maybe this was 50 years ago. No choice because we do not know what to do with atrial fibrillation. But 2021, we know what to do. We can cure you. But you have to come early. Is it have a genetically linked disease? In general, no. But there are some reports recently that there are some family reports of atrial fibrillation, but genetically linked AF is very rare. It has been reported, but usually if it's so, you get AF like the rest, the whole of your family members, and you get AF at a very young age, like when you are as young as 12 years old, 10 years old. So I have not seen one myself. I have some patients, 
uh, father and son getting atrial fibrillation. Not very common in my 30 years, maybe about less than five. I'm not sure whether they're genetically linked because the father got it when he was 60 years old and the son got it when he's 40. So I don't think it's genetically linked. It so happens that both of them have atrial fibrillation. Right. Please. Uh, thank you very much for all the questions. Uh, please uh, uh, send me some, uh, uh, some Hokkien questions. Some questions in Hokkien or Mandarin. I would like to show off my uh, skills in answering uh, English in English. <laughs> How accurate is Apple? Okay. How accurate is Apple Health Detected AF? Well, I'm not a spokesman for Apple, but it is FDA approved uh, and I've seen patients uh, who show me their ECG uh, based on the uh, Apple Health Detected AF and I'm quite uh, happy to note that it is quite convincing. I can uh, differentiate uh, that this patient indeed has a fibrillation of the AWOL sinus rhythm. So yes, my answer is, it depends, you know, it's like what, what they used to call GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. If you, this is an Apple Watch, if you do a lousy job in, the, in documenting the atrial fibrillation, of course, no one can make head or tail out of it. But if you do it well, and I have seen the ECG strips of Apple Watchers and Cardia, Alive Core, and I can make a, a, a diagnosis based on them. So it's, it depends how you do it. Good afternoon. When I make a battery came to the 10th year, my Cardia catch a feet more frequent. Is that normal? <clears throat> it's got nothing to do with your pacemaker. It just means that uh, you obviously got a pacemaker 10 years ago. And you don't get a pacemaker when you're 20 years old. So I presume pacemaker you're 80, 70. So 10 years later, you are at 10 more years. And so as we know, as we grow older, atrial fibrillation is more common. So perhaps, sir, when your battery, uh, pacemaker battery is at the 10th year, it's got nothing to do with the pacemaker. But whatever conditions that cause you to have a pacemaker, that may have led to the uh, incident of atrial fibrillation. So, while waiting for any other questions, so I'm very, very happy to note that uh, there's a lot of questions coming from the audience. So, while waiting for, uh, for some more questions, uh, I would like to... Um, oh, so that, sorry, there's another question there. Oh, we already 422. I was told it's only for 20 minutes. So, so okay, I, I was given uh, instruction by my producer there that I can go for another minute or another hour, another minute. One minute. Oh, not one hour. Okay, one minute. I'm having fun here. So, will coffee, tea or energy drink affect my AF? AF what about other stimulants? As I mentioned before, you test yourself. If you drink coffee and it doesn't lead to worsening of AF, go ahead and drink coffee. If you drink tea or energy drink, energy drinks, uh, all these coffeins, you know, all your energy drinks have a bit of, uh, uh, to a certain extent, caffeine as a stimulant. So yes, it can uh, trigger atrial fibrillation. But I don't want to tell you, you cannot have tea, coffee and all these stimulants, uh, energy drinks. Go ahead and take them, but you, 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 you take it until the point where you say, okay, if I take one bottle of uh, Monster uh, juice or whatever, and that caused my, uh, my, 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 my atrial fibrillation to become worse, you know that you can't take it. Maybe you drink half a can. So all these things, as I mentioned before, you have to experiment yourself. Not everyone is the same. And we don't like in medicine to tell you, you can't do this, you can do that. Everything in life is moderation. You can. It's a balance. So, while waiting for other questions, I have not had any questions yet in, uh, in Tamil or in Mandarin. So, finally, what we do at CVSKL is that if you were to see one of our doctors in CVSKL, and if you have atrial fibrillation and you don't see me, what, will, what they do is that they will refer you to me. So there are many types of subspeciality even in cardiology. So your doctor that you are seeing may not be an electrophysiologist. Your doctor may be a heart specialist uh, 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 specializing in coronary artery disease or heart failure. So when you have atrial fibrillation and they do the initiative, you atrial fibrillation, ask them that uh, to uh, to recommend you to the nearest uh, doctor who can do uh, who can offer you uh, a specific treatment for atrial fibrillation, which includes uh, uh, analyzing your risk for stroke, 
uh, analyzing what are the best option is it taking medication or is it uh, doing ablation some patients and we didn't talk about it some patients they need a pacemaker so they have atrial fibrillation but they need a pacemaker rather than a catheter ablation so there are many faces to atrial fibrillation it is not a homogeneous condition it is very heterogeneous and the treatment is dependent on each individual patient so when we see you we will look at you as a whole what your risk factors what your symptoms and what is troubling you is it the fast is it the slow and then we will we will de develop a beautiful and nice package uh, to treat your atrial fibrillation in the best way, which is specific for you. F seems to be depressing. How can we have a family member come and see me? You will not be depressed anymore. We will do something to get rid of your atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation should not be depressing. Why is it depressing? Is it because you don't have, you feel that there is no treatment? No, sir. There are a lot of treatment. It may not, it may be that you are not aware or your doctors did not tell you that there are treatment. Do not be depressed. Do not give up hope. Atrial fibrillation is a curable condition. It is not like I'm telling you, you have cancer stage four, then you can get depressed. Even then you shouldn't get depressed. But please, AF is no reason to get depressed. Jokes aside, come and see the proper doctor and we can do something for you. Inshallah. Any other questions? Is that it? Okay, it is uh, 4.26. Uh, wow, I tell you, when they first told me I, I had 20 minutes, I was wondering whether it's too long, but I realized 20 minutes is too short. I hope that I have, uh, uh, that I have made your afternoon uh, enjoyable and that, uh, that, uh, that you have made, made your time worthwhile to dial in into our Facebook Live. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, and from CVSKL, Bye-bye and good afternoon.